Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. We have some breaking news. Officials with Moorhead Schools are releasing information about an incident that happened during the first week of school where a student was given the wrong medication. The district's official released this statement saying a situation occurred at Horizon Middle School in which a student received incorrect medication. The student did not have adverse effects. We are working closely with the student's family. Moorhead Public Schools is committed to our safety of the students and are reviewing our protocols to ensure this does not happen again. We'll have more on this story as it continues to develop. All right, well, yesterday Lisa Green promised us, promised us sunny skies and we have them. So do we get to keep them? Let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. I think so, and Fargo will continue to have sunshine and more of us will get in on it. We're still working on clearing away some of those clouds in the east and temperatures there are a little cooler. We're at 60 degrees in Bidette, but head south and we're looking at some nice warm air, 73 in Park Rapids, 74 in Sisseton. Fargo's right at 69 and it's 70 degrees in Grand Forks. So working our way up into the 70s in several spots here already this afternoon afternoon. There is a northwesterly breeze now. We're looking at winds that are gusting into the 20s, a 24 mile per hour gust in Grand Forks and 23 in Devil's Lake. So at times we've got a little breeze, but looking pretty good though on our sky cam or rather our satellite map, you can see that we do have some clouds working their way through the Red Lake area and then some of those fair weather cumulus clouds popping up this afternoon. The larger area of cloud cover will eventually move on and you'll get some sunshine there too. So looking like a good day. We'll be back into the mid 70s today in Fargo and we'll continue to enjoy pleasant conditions even into tonight. Now we do have some changes coming up for the weekend. We'll let you know what to expect as you're making your weekend plans coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Lisa, thank you for this beautiful Friday weather. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, this week's Valley Most Wanted is 29-year-old Jessica Bailey. Police say she's wanted for a probation violation on a theft charge. Call your local law enforcement if you have any information about where she might be. In 2014, parents accused Woodbury High School girls basketball coach Nathan McGuire of swearing during practice and inappropriately touching players and flirting with them. He was almost immediately put on leave and then lost his job, but none of the allegations were substantiated. And now he's suing the parents for defamation. You can still say, I don't think this coach made the right call in the last game. I don't think the coach is putting the right players on the field. But when you get into the area of accusing someone of a crime or saying they've been in jail, you cross the line. If it's not true. If it's not true. That's okay. exactly right. And the Supreme Court ruling found that high school coaches are not public figures, which means it's much easier for parents or anyone else to defame them. The Fargo Police Department will hold a Citizens Police Academy this fall. The goal is to give citizens an opportunity to gain a better understanding of what law enforcement officers go through every day through classroom and hands-on training. The program will be held each Tuesday from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. from October 1st to November 26th. The class size is limited and applications will be processed in the order in which they are received. The deadline to submit an application is Friday, September 20th. Applications may be completed online at FargoPolice.com. The Minnesota governor shows off the latest member of the first family, Meet Scout, a three-month-old lab mix. Governor Tim Wall says the pup makes good on a promise he made to his son when he won the election. Wall's son, Gus, says Scout was found in a box, abandoned, at a high-kill shelter in Oklahoma. Scout was then taken in by Midwest Rescue Animal Services and placed with a foster family. Walls advocates for getting a pet from a shelter, noting that a million and a half animals are killed every year, waiting for a forever home. I think it was March of 17, and Gus said he'd always wanted a dog. And I said, well, Gus, if we win that governor's race, we'll get a dog. And Gus never brought it up again. Never brought it up, never brought it up. And we were in the room on election night, and the folks were in there, and it came on TV that they called the race. Wall says Scout and his first sibling, Afton the Cat, are getting adjusted to each other. Hurricane Dorian has come ashore on the southern tip of North Carolina's Outer Banks. The storm pounded the region with top sustained winds of 90 miles an hour and sheets of rain. Katherine Johnson is in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina with the latest. 
Dorian took its last shot at the U.S., battering North Carolina's Outer Banks as a Category 1 storm. This latest development shows that we cannot yet let our guard down. There's concern about hundreds of people who chose to not evacuate and may be trapped on Ocracoke Island. There are rescue teams ready as soon as they can get in. Emergency officials here in North Carolina warn the biggest issue is going to be flash flooding. Storm surges are expected up to seven feet. The storm's violent winds were on display at this light station off the coast of North Carolina. From space, Dorian still seems menacing. More than 350,000 homes and businesses have lost power. Dorian sideswiped the southeast coast, spawning at least two dozen tornadoes. This water spout became a tornado that tore through an RV park. Two minutes down from my house, there was two tornadoes that had touched down. And I've never been in one. I don't want to be in one. Dorian also caused widespread flooding in coastal communities around Charleston and Wilmington. When you've been displaced in a storm like this two years in a row, it's, it's tough. It's tough on the family. Dorian is expected to continue skirting the eastern seaboard through the weekend. Storm surge, hurricane, and tropical storm warnings and watchings have been issued as far, as, as far north as Canada. On the Jersey Shore, hurricane flags are up and beaches are deserted. The NFL kicks off its 100th season this week, and some football stadiums are getting a broadband upgrade that tops our look at Consumer News. If you're headed to an NFL game this weekend, you may have better cell service to share your game day picks. Verizon says it's lighting up 5G ultra wideband service in 13 stadiums across the country this weekend, with additional stadiums to be added throughout the season. Fans heading out to home openers at those stadiums with a 5G device will have access to higher capacity, faster download speeds, and lower latency. It will also be the first chance for folks with 5G devices in many of those markets to test out the next generation technology. The Golden Drives community event and bike run is back at Bonanzaville for its seventh year. There will be activities set up throughout the village, like a silent auction and bounce houses for kids, but it's more than just fun and games. The Golden Drives' main mission is to educate the community by raising awareness. Just seeing so many children in our community that are either in poverty and definitely that we have a lot that are homeless. So whatever we can do to make a difference, I think that's, that's our goal. The Golden Drive community event and bike run starts tomorrow at 11 a.m. For more information, head to our website and click on this story.